Hi everyone, I'm David Bullock. Welcome back to the Ask David Bullock Show. Today I'm going to follow uh, on a topic that I'm actually excited to talk to you guys about because I get to talk about things that are kind of behind the scenes that usually only attorneys know. Uh, and it follows a while back, I commented on a, on a news story where I did a live video and I talked about the value of life, how as an attorney, we're not allowed to make a value of life argument uh, as it relates to maybe what professional athletes are paid or what the cost of a, of a private jet might be. The court says that's improper. But a lot of questions that I get asked are if, if my client is involved in an accident and we're making a claim against that at-fault driver's insurance company, how come we can't bring a lawsuit and we can't name that at-fault driver's insurance company? So you're watching the Ask David Bullock Show. Stay tuned to find out the answer. All right, so the question is, if we're making a claim against that at-fault driver's insurance company, why can't we name the at-fault driver's insurance company in the lawsuit? Why do we only name uh, that certain individual as the defendant when that individual really has nothing else to do with the claim anymore? And it's a good question. The answer to that question is the insurance company's lobbied and they got a statute passed in the state of Florida and it's called the non-joinder statute. And what it says is that even though the insurance company, they're the ones that have the insurance adjusters, they're the ones that are making all the decision as to how much they're gonna value the claim, what are they gonna offer on the case as far as trying to settle it. It's gonna be the insurance company's either in-house attorneys or attorneys that they're paying. And then the insurance company, they're gonna be the ones that are paying for all the expert witnesses and court costs but they're gonna hide behind their insured, which they're gonna use his name, put his name up in the lights, but really they're insured. After the accident happened, their insured really doesn't have anything to do with the case anymore. So the insurance companies have taken that under the theory that if, if a jury sees an insurance company's name uh, in, the, in, the, on the, in the case style, then the jury's gonna think, well, this is an insurance company, we really don't care we're gonna give the plaintiff a whole bunch of money, which is kind of counterintuitive when you think about it because one of the instructions that the jury is given, uh, and it's one of the very first ones given to a jury, is they're not to use sympathy. They're supposed to use their life experiences, use their common sense, and they're supposed to evaluate the evidence that's presented, and based upon that evidence, they're supposed to render a verdict which fairly and accurately represents what the evidence is. However, even though that's the jury instruction, the insurance companies have taken it and they've tried to remove their name from it, hide behind their insureds so that they can try to lower the amount of money that a jury would award to someone. So that's the reason why, based upon the non-joinder statute, that we do not name insurance companies when we sue the at-fault driver. The difference with that is when we're making an uninsured motorist lawsuit, uh, when it's against your own insurance company for uninsured motorist benefits, you obviously can then name your insurance company as a defendant in the lawsuit. But I hope that answers your question. Uh, some of these things I actually get excited where I can tell you some of the things uh, that in, in a jury or in a trial, I can't tell you. But in these videos, I can. And so I hope this kind of gives you a behind the scenes look and answer something uh, that if you don't know an attorney that you've thought about but maybe didn't know who to ask. But again, thank you for watching the Ask David Bullock Show and continue to stay, keep watching.